Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Josh and today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the HP M254DW CMYK laser printer with the Ghost White Toner cartridge system installed in it. We're going to show you everything from unboxing and setup all the way to your first print. I'm going to be demonstrating all of this on a PC running the Windows 10 software with the printer connected via a wireless network. Let's not waste any more time with me trying to show off what I learned in the After Effects class and let's go ahead and get started. The M254 is an 8.5 by 11 inch printer and it comes packed inside this nice little box. On this box you can find all types of information such as the contents of the box in multiple languages, what type of toner cartridges it uses, 202A, system requirements for multiple operating systems, and finally the serial number can be found on the box as well. I strongly suggest that you keep your box just in case you have to deal with anything warranty related. Speaking of warranty related, let's go ahead and talk about what's covered by your warranty just so you know what to do if something like that were to ever happen. So if it has anything to do with a part of the printer not working correctly or for example if something is broken off like the MP tray. Or maybe you find something uh, while you're doing your test, like a test print. Like say if with normal sheets of paper it's jamming all the time, you want to contact HP support directly for warranty service or replacement. Uh, if you are having an issue with the HP toners that came with the printer, this also falls under the HP warranty and requires you to contact HP support. If you are having an issue with your Ghost white toner cartridge or any of the Ghost CMYK cartridges, you need to contact whoever you purchased it from. If it was from me, then you want to send an email with a picture of the issue uh, to support at uscutter.com for the fastest turnaround. If you are having an issues with uh, your transfer paper or if it's a normal type of paper, you want to contact whoever you purchased the transfer paper from or the specialty paper from. Uh, HP support uh, is not going to support you on you know anything that they consider not official HP. So anything that doesn't have their name on it, they're not going to support. So uh, just to let you know also that using non-official HP toners inside the printer will not void your warranty. Uh, same thing with using the transfer papers. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and open up the box and see what's inside. The first thing you're going to notice when you open up this box is that there's going to be an HP install disk, USB cables, a power cord, an introduction uh, with instruction manuals, and then warranty information. If you're looking to get some in-depth knowledge, go ahead and take a look at these. Uh, it's very helpful if this is your first time installing a printer and you're not too familiar with it. I'm connecting this printer to my network using a wireless network, so I'm not going to be using the USB cable. I also have my computer connected to the internet uh, and Windows 10 uh, updated to the latest version, so I don't use the install CDs to install the drivers. Uh, because Windows can automatically do that for me without installing any monitoring programs with annoying pop-ups. First, let's go ahead and see how to access the toner cartridges. There is no button on the side. You just gently pull the face of the printer down to reveal the tray, push the blue tab down, and pull the tray forward to reveal the cartridges. There's no lock or anything holding the cartridge in place. You just pull it right out. On the right side of the cartridge, you can see the chip the printer reads. Next to that is the sticker with the information, toner manufacturer, and everything. Uh, you can just slide it right in here. You can see me popping the ghost cartridge in, or you can watch me struggle to use my left hand to pop it in, and then close. Let's see what kind of junk it has in the trunk. On this side, we have a port for the power cord to connect to, and then on the other side, we have the USB and wired LAN connection port. Open this up, and then you're going to see some rollers and such. Uh, you can also see the fuser, which you can't pull out, uh, but this is only going to be opened if you have a jam or something. Looking at the front of the printer, we have a touch screen, and we're going to touch on that later. All lame jokes aside, we also have on the front of the printer the MP tray, which is on top and used for feeding one print at a time. On the bottom is tray two, and that's for loading in multiple prints. Also on the top right, we have the power button, and that's going to be used for turning the printer on and off. Taking a closer look at the printer trays, we're going to start with tray two, and it is a typical printer tray that you can pull out to adjust or load. Uh, its max paper size is eight and a half inches by 11 inches, and you can adjust it to hold smaller size materials. Uh, behind these sheets of paper, it has instructions on the actual tray itself, and you can actually adjust it very easily just by pushing the blue tabs and then sliding these pieces of plastic in and out. Same thing goes for this one here, just up and down. 
if you want to use any size material that fits in there, you can hold it snugly. Uh, just make sure you adjust it. Now, we're going to take a closer look at the MP tray, the tray on top. You can just feed one sheet at a time because it just eats it and then holds it and, and waits on you to tell it to print. You can also slide these around, so if you want to feed in something that's not quite eight and a half inches wide, you can. Back to the touchpad, we've got a few options on here, the first being the USB option. I don't really print from USB, but you can if you want to, and here's the menu. The next option is going to be for showing you how much toner you have left. The third option is going to be for the web apps. I don't really use this because I like to actually be around when I print. Um, so I've never used it. Uh, next option is going to be the only menu that I use and that's the setup menu. So let's explore a little bit about what's inside this setup menu. Of course you've got your reports which is very important if you want to do any testing or anything like that. You can find all types of reports, print quality, everything. Uh, so anytime you want to do a test report there you can find it there. Uh, Self-diagnostics, I don't really need that. System setups, uh, this is also important for me because when you're doing something like printing transfers, you can go ahead and set like uh, the settings on your printer. That way it automatically uh, sets it for a specific type of media. So for example, if you're doing forever laser dark all the time, you can just have it set to color laser transparency all the time. Now, since we're in the setup menu, let's go ahead and show you how to set up your uh, wireless network. You just wanna hit the network setup button and then you wanna go up to the top to where it says wireless menu, click that. And then to make it easy, we're gonna hit the wireless setup wizard. And once we hit that, it's going to scan the networks that are in the area and show you a list of all the networks around there. And then you're going to collect, uh, connect to the network of your choice. I've got my network J network here, and then I'm going to put in my password that you're not going to see and connect to my network. The last thing we want to do before installing the printer on our computer is verify that all of our toner cartridges are in working order. And to do this, we're going to be printing out a demo page from the reports menu as shown above. And I have the cyan, yellow, magenta, and black toner cartridges installed inside the printer. This is going to give us a nice colorful print with gradients all over it that looks great on a white sheet of paper. See? Next, we're going to swap over to the ghost white toner, and I'm going to load the printer with one of my pink sheets so the white toner will show up. For this test, we're going to be going back into the setup menu, only this time it's going to be on the printer again. Well, it's going to be on the printer. But uh, we're going into the report section and I want to print the configuration report. This report only uses white toner for text and will allow us to verify that the cartridge prints the white just fine and it won't waste any of the colors from your other toners. Although I printed a demo page anyway, um, you know, but it also justifies me having all this colored paper laying around with you know, my house. Oh, I also mentioned those demo pages. Here are both of them next to each other. Uh, you should be able to tell which is which by now though. A little change of scenery for a change of pace since we're going to be switching over to the computer side of things. As I mentioned before, I'm using a PC running Windows 10 operating system with a connection to the internet. My printer is connected through a network, uh, but you can connect your printer to your computer however you like. You can use a USB connection, uh, you can have it hardwired to your network, or you could even print directly using USB if you want. You have all those options available, but uh, this is what I found in my experience has been the easiest solution and what I run into uh, when I'm dealing with most of my customers. So let's go ahead and get started with that. First thing you want to do is open your start menu and then select the settings gear icon on the left side. Once the Windows setting window opens up, you want to select devices. Once you're in the Devices tab, you want to select the printers and scanners over here on the left side. I'm going to slow down so I can slow down and catch my breath. Once you find the tab, you want to click Add Printer or Scanner button up at the top and your computer will search everywhere and show you all the printers it can install. Once you find the M254, click it and let Windows do its thing. Once installed, it'll load up any program you want, uh, or you can load up any program you want, send a file to it and print. Uh, for this example, I'm going to load up a copy of Vinyl Master, um, as you see here, and send a file to it. Now, when you send your file uh, to over to it, uh, you're just going to select uh, the printer from the menu of printers you have installed. I have a lot, obviously. It's going to be right here at the top for me, the M254DW. I'm going to click Print and give it a few seconds, and you should hear your printer start to warm up behind you, and then voila, we've got a full print right here. 
And now with that successful print, uh, we can start printing whatever we want. I've made several videos detailing how to create uh, transfers with all types of paper and with the ghost toner system that you can check out. Now, before you say, Josh, your older videos use the M452 and not the M254, well, let me be the first to tell you that the print engines are the same for both printers. Let's take this access point right here for the printers. Um, you could reach them by typing in the printer's IP address, but you can see the two pages are almost exactly the same. The only difference between the features is the M452 has a job storage feature that the M254 doesn't, but everything's exactly the same. So if you want to learn how to adjust your toner density and see some examples on paper, go watch the video that I've made on it. I've got plenty of videos that you can check out from transfer papers for hard surfaces to t-shirts to just printing on normal types of papers to different types of softwares. And as a bonus, you can see how my video skills have slowly been progressing little by little with each video. As always, if you have any questions, you can contact me in the comments or shoot me an email over at work at sales at uscutter.com. Just put Josh's Corner as the title when you send it over and that will get it straight over to me. My main goal with these videos is that they get popular enough that uh, the higher ups at work will eventually just let me work from home making these videos all the time. That would be great, but you know, I can dream, can't I? Coming up, I've got an in-depth look at the eye color, 600, 350 uh, sublimation toners, and then the big one is going to be converting a Sawgrass SG800 from Chromablast to sublimation. Will it work? I have no clue, but let's find out. Thank you again for taking the time to watch this video and have yourself a wonderful day.